first time I bought crypto was in Jan 21. So I'm kind of late to the game versus most people. I was very crypto skeptic for a very long time. So it took me a long time to get my head around that. And a friend of mine, Mando, uh, was telling me about NFTs. And, um, you know, I was like, dude, I just got my head around Bitcoin, Ether. Like, I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars on, on JPEGs. But, um, you know, I saw some, how much money he was making. So I bought my first nft in march of 21 um and then from there i just got you know sucked into the whole ecosystem started to understand web3 from more than just a buying and selling standpoint um and uh, that's how i ended up where i am NFTs and all my crypto is green. you guys bought a bunch of apes uh, i'm just wondering what was your mindset at that point both man and i were big risk takers when we were working in banks so we were always told i still remember i first like week on the trading floor and I was sitting next to my boss and he was like look if you have conviction or something like you should take a lot of risk on it because you have to back your opinion back your thoughts back your instincts and and go for it he was like the worst thing ever is like you have conviction or something and then you just buy you know you know if in nft world you buy one of them and it does like a hundred x and you're like damn like i i made good money on one thing but i was really really sure of it and i just didn't make the money on it right and look you're not always right 100% of the time, but you really have to have confidence in yourself that you're going to be right more than 50% of the time. And talking about high max conviction stuff, like you kind of want that number to be 70 or 75%. So, you know, at that time, the whole idea of digital identity was taking off and you just really had one PFE project, which was punks. But it was just so clear that apes were the number two. It was so clear that they had the strongest community. At this point, apes were like two or three ETH and, and punks were like 25 ETH. So... It just seemed like that was a big, that was a higher base of play with more upside. You and Mando went on to create Canary Labs, where you originally did the Regens and Dgens projects. How was the journey, like building up that Discord? So the first project we did was a project called Dgens, and originally it was meant to be like a cartoon PFP. We were going to build a comic book around it, build some IP around it, and but we tried, just didn't work. Um, I think the project was basically a failure, and it ended up going to zero twice despite our, our best efforts so we just realized that was something we're not good at like both man, man and i used to be professional traders we that's what our background was in so we stuck we were like okay how do we actually want to add value and make people want to own these nfts let's make the discord token gated and let's just start putting in information that people might find useful i started writing daily market commentaries man and i both started writing search reports on different nft projects and Eventually, people started finding that stuff useful. So we built that up into what's now the dgens.finance platform. And it's like a whole analysis platform. We've written like over 300 different research reports. And we actually migrated the dgens utility, if you like, to, to a new NFT called the dgens access pass. I'm actually kind of curious. What does it take to build a project in the Web3 space? A lot of this stuff is like very much building in public. It's not like a regular company where you just build a product and then you go out there and sell it. It's like... Everyone wants to know, what are you doing today? What are you doing tomorrow? Like, what is the roadmap? The main things about building a project is figure out what you want your touch points with your community to be and how you can make it regular without diluting what you're doing. And, and for us, like, for example, having the daily market commentary or having some of the Twitter spaces or YouTube streams that we do, like, they give us daily touch points to the community where we're providing new information every day. It's the same format of information, but it's new information that people want to consume every day. And that allows us to have, like, regular connectivity with the community rather than be like hey we drop this thing and then we go quiet for weeks or months and then hey here's the next thing because in that time you can lose people very quickly when you're talking about community building how does somebody get in that twitter headspace so it doesn't feel like oh i have to consciously think about what i want to say on twitter or what i want to do on discord because it just feels like i'm speaking to my friends and just how i would speak to my friends if i was on whatsapp or, or iMessage or whatever you have to like structure your workflow you know, day to day if you like to make it things that are genuine to you so it doesn't feel like you're trying to force anything and and that's how i feel just like everything that i do now is not it's unforced because like i'm just being me using this technology or using these forms of discussion the way i would use them anyway whether it was web3 or something else but before we like get into like a bit about rec guys what was like your, your journey as to become like an artist in this space? And how do you respond when people like to criticize on like your style of art that it's like, oh, like you just copied X copy, so to speak. Most people don't know this because I think they just assume that I was like a trader before or, or collector and then I kind of turned into an artist. But I actually used to do a lot of art when I was younger. Like most of my family is, is quite artistic and creative. I was like painting and drawing when I was a kid. I used to create a lot of digital art from the ages of like 13 to 18. So... 
I've always had that within me and I just kind of stopped doing it because I went to a different job, didn't have time and I just kind of like felt like I always just moved on from it. And when I came back into NFTs, I just had this itch to just put it out there and eventually someone bought it and I started to see some incremental success with each new piece that I minted. And, um, you know, people say like, hey, this is just like a rip off of X copy or whatever. And I think that's absolutely fair. Like X copy is one of my favorite artists and is definitely one of my biggest inspirations. I think if you compare some of the concepts and themes that exist in my art right now, they're probably very similar to the concepts and themes that existed in my art 15 years ago before any of this stuff started. So that would be my defense in that. I think as time has moved on and that, you know, it's, it's now about 18 months since I minted the first piece, I think I've kind of developed and grown into my own style. So let's dive into Rec Guys. Um... Just you want to speak about the art, the project, kind of, you know, what's been going on and, you know, what's what's next, if there is anything next. At Kaiser's thoughts of doing it in January 2022 because I just had this character that was in the art that I was creating and I, I guess I, I thought it would be cool if it was a PFP. Uh, it was a free mint because we didn't want to, yeah, it wasn't something that I wanted to make money out of. We had royalties because, you know, just to have the upside if it did take off and it was a free mint for DJs and regens. The idea for that, I think it's an important idea. It's like, look, if, even if you like mess up a project and it goes to zero, it, that's fine. Like think about how many startups fail, right? But if you then start a new project, I think it's on you to like bring on your original supporters, right? Like, and for me, that was this idea. It's like, this is not going to be a big thing, but I want to benefit everyone who supported that original DJ mint and regens afterwards. And then we dropped it. Uh, and then a week later, it dropped about 50%. And um, I guess we just captured the site guy or meta at that point in time, which wasn't intentional. What it made me realize, and I think what it made Manda realize is that, um, you do have these NFT communities that exist on the basis of memes or crypto themes or things that people can resonate with and congregate around what's coming, what's going forward. I think the idea is like, this is just like an art and culture PFP that people like being a part of. And we like doing in real life events. We've done a few of those, um, have stuff like Rec Radio, which is some good content that we produce. And I think the idea is like, I just want to own this Rec guy because it reminds me of what I've just been through. And it reminds me of what crypto culture is about. Because right now, this year, ETH is up, what, 75% year to date? Bitcoin's up 80% year to date. Maybe it's a bear market value, whatever. But like, you're in a, we've had four or five months of up only, and people are still somehow getting wrecked because that idea of getting wrecked happens whether it's a bull or a bear market. You can always you know, screw up. And, um, that's why I think that that project is, uh, is going to be evergreen from that perspective. This channel is intended purely for educational purposes and does not constitute financial or tax advice. NFTs and all my crypto is green. I'm watching Gary V on TV. What do you mean? She wear Gucci and Louis, but her favorite Celine.